Hey guys, um, today I'm going to show you the Midnight Shift. Um, I looked on YouTube and there is no tutorials for it, at least not that I could find. So that will be the first. It's a really cool shift. It's almost invisible when done correctly. Um, it's motivated and you can do it pretty slow. So I'll show you what it looks like. We have a card selected from somewhere near the middle. We'll use the Ten of Diamonds. And the idea is if you just give the sides a little square, Make sure your card's lost in the pack. It actually comes back to the top. I'll do it once more face up so you guys can get the idea. Like I said, if you leave the card in the center, it comes right back to the top. And that is Steve Drawn's Midnight Shift. Um, now we're going to get into the workings of it. Um, it's based on the Herman Pass, which, um, if you don't know, the Classic Pass brings the top packet underneath like so, and the Herman Pass does just the opposite, brings the bottom packet on top. And that's um, what we're going to be doing. So what you're going to want to do is get a little finger break. Um, actually, I'll show you a method too where you don't need a finger break, and that's the one that I usually use. But um, I'll teach you from a finger break first. So we use this eight of hearts. I'm going to leave it face up so you can see what's going on. <clears throat> so you catch a little finger break. Okay. Now what you're going to want to do, um, I'm going to try to do it from an exposed view here. This top packet, um, you're going to widen the break a little bit in the front as you bring your hand over. And you're going to leave your hand in this position, almost like a diagonal over the pack, as your thumb and fingers slightly lift up on this pack, just a little bit. Now what I like to do is to lift up and bring it forward just a little bit, maybe about an inch. So this top packet is going to come forward about an inch. Now, I'm going to remove the top packet. What you're going to do is with your fingers in this position, basically a mechanics grip, but it's like a deep mechanics grip because you took this part of the, the deck off. You're going to rotate this packet with your palm out like this. Okay. You can even do it with your pointer finger underneath if it makes it easier for you. I don't like that method as much because you lose a little bit of cover that your pointer finger would give you, but you can do that. So like I said, you're going to move this packet forward, and as you do that, you're going to rotate this packet. How can I show this to you? Underneath like this, okay? Now, you're going to slowly or slightly dip this packet in the right hand to meet the packet in the left hand as you rotate your entire left hand toward you like this. Now you're going to use your thumb on the top and middle finger on the bottom with your right hand to grab the deck from your left hand as you square with the left and square with the right. Okay. I don't know if I can give you like an over the shoulder, but I'll try. So again, it's going to look like this. We'll have a card selected from the center. You catch a little finger break. And you're going to, with your hand at a diagonal, your pointer finger like this, you're going to grab the deck. You're going to lift up slightly to give just a little clearance. You're going to move it forward. I'm exaggerating a little for the camera. And that makes it a lot easier to cover this motion of the left hand rotating underneath. So then this dips slightly to meet this packet as the hand comes up and squares like this. So at speed, like I said, it's going to look something like this. The nine of clubs. and it's controlled to the top. Um, now the reason that I told you guys to move this front packet forward, if you don't move the front packet forward, this is what they're going to see. They're going to see this. And you'd be amazed by if you just move this forward just a little bit, that visual disappears. Okay. Like I said, if you're here, you can see the deck. If you come here, you can't. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what I wanted you guys to understand. Um, I'm going to show you a different method of doing it. Like I said, we already learned how to do it from a break. So any way that you can obtain a break, you can go ahead and now do that midnight shift and bring the card to the top. Um, but I'm going to teach you a way to do it a little bit quicker and without a break. Um, if you just want to use it as a, as a card control, this is the method that I would suggest. Uh, if you dribble the cards, have a spectator call it stop, leave it face up, 
and then you're going to use the dribble control. All the dribble control is instead of dribbling the cards directly on top, you're going to start the dribble a little bit farther back so the cards land in this area. Do it over the shoulder so you can see this. And then you slowly dribble them up. So that creates a step in the back of the deck. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it creates a step. Okay. So all you do is pull up on that step. Now, as you pull up on the step, you already you automatically put your hand in this position. So you pull up, angle it forward, or move it forward just a little bit as you go right into the shift and square up. Again, um, like I said, you do it from a dribble. So you do the dribble control, you pull up, and that starts your pass immediately. So that you don't have to fumble around with getting a break. A lot of people, you know, they'll leave a card and then they gotta get the break, and then they gotta adjust and go to the classic pass. That sucks. If I mean the midnight shift, you can be so much faster. You know, you got the ace of spades there. You just pull right up. Oops, I almost lost the break. At the ace of spades there, you pull up and you go right into the shift. So it looks like you're just doing an all-around square up type of move, and it's fast. So, like I said, that is the midnight shift. I'll go over it one more time, just so you guys understand. I said you're going to catch a break. With your hand in a diagonal, you're going to slide this top packet forward while rotating this underneath packet this way. You're going to coalesce them. You're going to drop the right hand down to coalesce them and rotate it back up as you square. Um, you can also do it as a color change. Um, if you're at if your spectators towards your right, that's the optimum angle from the front or from the right. But from the right, for a color change, it's going to look the best. So let's say we have the nine of diamonds. You just give it a twist and it changes. Um, so that's a, that's a cool application for it. But um, the only angle you're going to want to avoid is from your far left. I mean, you're, you're pretty covered at most angles. Like even at your left, I mean, it still is relatively invisible. Um, it just looks like you're squaring the cards. But if you're at your, your far left like this, the only problem is they're going to see this packet come up generally um, and that's pretty much the only thing that you want to avoid they also they also may see the bottom card changing but um angles are pretty good as long as you don't have anybody your far left you should be fine even if you do what I would suggest if you're working a crowd as you were to do the move just swing your body to the left as you square uh, and that's it that's the midnight shift if you guys have any questions feel free to send me a message or a comment and I'll do my best to help you but like I said, you should definitely practice it. It's a great move, very deceptive, and uh, hope you like it.